Hello, and thank you for watching this Corn Belt Regional Forecast. I'm Andrew Pritchard, meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, temperatures are really the big story here over the next three to five days. We're going to be riding quite a bit of a roller coaster here. A wave of colder air was just delivered to a widespread chunk of the Corn Belt overnight, and over the last 24 hours, uh, we'll see temperatures slowly moderating through the end of the week before another shot of colder air arrives over the weekend. Now the active corridor for the heaviest precipitation continues to be the east coast over the next 20 uh, or the next week or two I should say the next 7 to 14 days uh, but there are opportunities for precipitation here both some light snow across the northern plains perhaps a light wintry mix across portions of uh, the central and eastern corn belt here as we get into the weekend and then again some more rain across portions of the the mid south and especially the eastern corn belt over the weekend now again, the big difference here, the temperatures, we watched a cold front move through over the last 24 hours. You see it right here making its way through uh, parts of the Eastern Corn Belt as we got into Monday afternoon and Monday evening. Taking a look at the current temperatures then below zero across parts of the Dakotas and the upper Midwest, down to the teens across parts of the central US, and then that cold front making its way through far Eastern Ohio, and then parts of Kentucky and Tennessee this morning where temperatures are still in the 40s and 50s in advance of it. 24 hour temperature change, you see those dark blues, the dark purple colors, those are temperatures that are anywhere from 15 uh, to 30, maybe 35 degrees colder than they were 24 hours ago, especially in some of these areas here near the uh, the Twin Cities here, parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin, where there's some fresh snow on the ground that helped temperatures really dive, uh, and they are much colder than they were on Monday morning. Now looking at the satellite picture, you can see the jet streak right here, the very strong jet stream winds and our frontal boundary making its way across the area. If we flip over and look at the radar picture, you see those rain showers, lots of rain behind the cold front here. Uh, kind of an interesting look there with that uh, front continuing to make its way out. Parts of southern Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee still dealing with some rain. We are mostly quiet on the back side here, except for maybe some flurries across parts of the high plains here in the upper Midwest. We've also got some lake effect snow going on as we bring much colder air over the top of the Great Lakes here on Tuesday morning. The last 48 hours of precipitation really took off uh, as we got east of a line here from parts of central Illinois into the boot heel of Missouri, down into parts of Arkansas here. That's where we got north of half of an inch. Across portions of central Illinois, maybe southern Wisconsin here, much lighter, a light drizzle for some of the areas here, and then some light snow across parts of the, uh, the Dakotas here into Minnesota and Wisconsin, where there was some more significant accumulating snow across parts of northwestern uh, Wisconsin and northeastern Minnesota. Just a quick snapshot look at the next few days. Again, today, that front making its way off to the south, so the more significant precipitation moving out of the Corn Belt, just a couple patchy flurries possible and scattered parts of the upper Midwest and the central and high plains as we have through the day today. Tomorrow, a chance of some very light snow flurries sneaking through this region here, parts of the Dakotas, across Iowa, into northern Illinois, uh, perhaps into northern and central Indiana. Very light, not talking about accumulating snow from this, just some snow flurries. Meanwhile, uh, uh, lake effect snow continues here, and that could be more significant across parts of the Great Lakes. So we head into the day on Thursday. A frontal boundary makes its way through the area, bringing some snow to parts of the upper Midwest. Quiet elsewhere. Friday, light snow flurry chances continue across the upper Midwest and the Dakotas. And then it's as we get into Saturday, our next area of low pressure develops. Uh, the more significant disruptive storm system here, parts of uh, the eastern corn belt here, parts of the mid South, a chance for some rain showers as we head through the day on Saturday, a chance for some snow across parts of the upper Midwest, parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Not out of the question that we could see some snow here across parts of central Illinois and central Indiana as well. Again, not really looking at uh, disruptive significant snow accumulations here, but I do think there is going to be a chance here of some snow making its way into parts of uh, further south across parts of central Illinois and central Indiana on Saturday. Now, looking bigger picture, what's driving all of this? Well, the jet stream here overnight tonight into Tuesday morning again, here's that very strong jet streak I pointed out. You could kind of see it on the satellite picture again associated with that frontal boundary. We've got another jet streak blasting in from the Canadian prairie here, and this is helping to deliver this very cold air. Now, as I take the drawings off and just kind of show you where we're headed, we'll uh, be able to pick out a couple subtle features uh, that'll be moving through the area over the next couple of days, uh, and then a more significant storm system here as we head into the weekend. So just taking it over the next 24 hours or so, it's on the nose of this jet streak here that we'll see the chance for some snow flurries making its way through parts of, again, parts of Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana as we head through the overnight into early Wednesday morning. This little trough, you can see a little trough within the flow here, that brings the snow flurry chances to parts of the Dakotas and the upper Midwest as we head through the day on Thursday. 
And then here comes our next trough, a more disruptive trough embedded within that flow right there. This is our weekend storm system, the one that brings the chance for some rain across the Mid-South and the Eastern Corn Belt, chance of a wintry mix here across parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, and then the chance for some additional snow across the upper Midwest. Now, if I take this out just a bit further, watching this trough clear the area, when this loop stops here on Sunday, uh, this will be Saturday evening and Sunday, watching another trough move ashore across the West Coast, this could be another uh, storm system that delivers some precipitation to parts of the, uh, the Eastern Corn Belt, parts of the Central US. Big question marks here, maybe another uh, round of snow across this region as we head into uh, December 18th through 20th timeframe. But again, I should probably stop drawing uh, drawings on there, getting people's hopes up for snow before Christmas here across the, the Midwest because a lot of uncertainty as we get to that point 10 days out into the future. A shorter range look, again, as we look at the high resolution NAM model, you'll watch this area of precipitation to continue to move off to uh, the south and to the east. We'll then watch this little streak of snow make its way through the region over the next 24 hours as we get into Tuesday night and Wednesday. There you see that snow making its way through early in the day, Wednesday dissipating. Now you're seeing the upper Midwest snow here from the Dakotas into Minnesota and Wisconsin as we get into the early part of the day on Thursday. Total accumulated snow through Thursday night. Again, not talking about much here. This is where that little corridor of snow may sneak through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning from South Dakota through Iowa and Illinois. This is your snow on Thursday, maybe one to three inches across parts of North Dakota into Minnesota and Wisconsin. Your heavier snow uh, totals possible here associated with lake effect snow across the UP of Michigan and Northern Michigan State. Now again, taking a wider range look at the long range European model precipitation type forecast. This will have the precipitation off to the south and to the east moving out of here. Here comes our Tuesday night and Wednesday light snow across parts of South Dakota, Iowa, Illinois, maybe uh, northern and central Indiana by the time we get to midday on Wednesday. Thursday, we're seeing snow overspread the Dakotas, parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin getting on into the uh, eastern Great Lakes. Friday, we see similar, maybe some light snow flurries across the region. And then as we get into Saturday, now our bigger storm system starting to take shape. Chances for rain across the eastern Corn Belt, parts of the mid-south, and then here, this would be our chance for a wintry mix, maybe some snow across the, uh, the Midwest here, parts of Missouri, parts of Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then getting into Indiana and Michigan as we get into Saturday night and Sunday. We'll talk about specifics here with total precipitation amounts and maybe some snow accumulations as we get a little bit closer. Taking a look at the GFS precipitation forecast though, uh, this will help us again identify the features. This is our first frontal boundary making its way through now. Here you see the little streak of snow through South Dakota, Iowa, and Illinois. I'm showing you several models here, showing you the good agreement between them with the placement of these uh, precipitation events. North Dakota into Minnesota and Wisconsin, your snow here Thursday and Friday. A chance for a little band of snow to sneak through here Saturday. This is associated with the next storm system making its way in. Rain beginning now across the eastern Corn Belt in the Mid-South, and then that chance for maybe a rain-snow mix through parts of the central and eastern Corn Belt. Total snow here from the GFS. Again, don't take this to heart, especially as we get into the weekend, but I just want to show you again that we're not looking at uh, significant, uh, you know, crippling snow here. Wherever this little corridor of snow uh, does end up here, uh, as we get into the Saturday and Sunday time frame, we're talking about maybe uh, two to four inches on the high side through parts of Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, and into uh, the Eastern Corn Belt. Now again, we'll go for a roller coaster ride with temperatures as these next few systems make their way, make their way through. Uh, colder air coming in as we start the day off Tuesday. We'll start to moderate slowly as we head into the end of the week with warmer temperatures coming in in advance of that next trough. This would be warm air advection in advance of our next storm system that looms off to the west as we get into the later part of the week, especially as we get into Thursday, Friday, and early Saturday across the eastern Corn Belt. But then on the back side, you're seeing that next push of colder air come in as we get into the weekend. This will be around December 14th and the 15th. A snapshot look at some of the, the uh, select cities here across the Corn Belt, just showing you the roller coaster ride that's associated with these incoming storm systems. Starting with Champaign, Illinois, a little bias here. That is where our office is located. You see the warm up as we head into Thursday and Friday, and then temperatures falling back off as we head into the weekend. Looking at Des Moines, big difference here. 20s the next couple of days, 40s as we head into Thursday and Friday, dropping back into the 20s by the time we get to Saturday and Sunday. Kansas City, 30s all the way to the 50s Thursday and Friday, Saturday and Sunday dropping back to highs in the 30s. And then as we head off to the north, Aberdeen, South Dakota, big difference here. Uh, much colder aired, single digits the next couple of days, all the way to a high of 27 on Friday. 
back down to a high of four degrees on Saturday with overnight lows well below zero. A wider picture look here just to wrap this video up. High temperatures for the day on Tuesday below zero across the uh, upper Midwest and parts of the Dakotas. Bitterly cold in that area. Temperatures all the way down into the 30s across the, uh, the Mid-South. High temperatures below zero once again for the day on Wednesday to the north. 50s off to the south. Starting to moderate into the end of the week here are your highs for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday, of course, seeing that next push of colder air making its way into the region. Overnight lows as we wake up tomorrow morning. Minus 20 is on the table across parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Overnight lows 20 below or 20 above as we head off to the south, parts of Kansas into Missouri and the Mid-South. Overnight lows on Thursday, once again below zero in the upper Midwest. 20s elsewhere, 30s across Kansas Sunday. And then here would be our Thursday. That was an incorrect graphic there. Just ignore that one. Friday then. Waking up to temperatures very cold again. Single digits, though, moderating slowly. At least we're above zero across the uh, the upper Midwest and the, uh, the Dakotas. Overnight lows in the 30s in the Mid-South. As always, Eric Snodgrass will have our long-range U.S.-focused weather analysis on Wednesday morning, and then I will be back to talk about the Corn Belt once again on Friday. Have a great day.